I'm gonna be doing a topographic survey of my entire house using this iPhone's LiDAR sensor. And now we're gonna start recording data. Now you can see I'm moving in a snake-like fashion, going back and forth, just like we would with the drone survey. This technique allows us to get the most amount of data and the most amount of overlap between our data and minimizes the amount of errors that we might have. Now I know what you're thinking. Rami, there's absolutely no way that you can do a topographic survey accurately using just an iPhone. And to an extent that's true. We use high accuracy total stations that cost between 20 and $60,000 to do topographic surveying. What if I told you there is a threshold you can achieve using a $1,000 cell phone in order to generate a topographic survey. Now without having any upgraded sensors, I just want to see what the stock LiDAR sensor and the stock GNSS receiver in this phone can achieve in terms of an accurate representation for a topographic survey. Now we want to make sure we get the finished floor elevation of the house. It's extremely crucial to have this information for our topographic survey. The same also applies for the garage. Okay, if we take a look here, this is the path that I took, and here is the final result of our front yard. This data doesn't look too bad, and that completes our first scan. Now there are going to be a total of four scans. The first scan, which was the front yard of the house. The second scan will be in the backyard of the house. The third scan will go around the house and try to capture as much detail of the siding. This will allow us to model the building and position it in our survey. And finally, the fourth scan will be all the way to the cul-de-sac. We're trying to map the high in the middle of the island because the top of this hydrant will be the benchmark for our project. Let's start scan number two. Now you probably notice I have a whole bunch of targets laid out throughout the site. These targets are going to be our control points and they're going to be observed using a GNSS receiver. The coordinates of the GNSS receiver will help us position all of the point clouds that we get from the separate scans to help us merge all the scans into one project. I'm also going to be observing the top of the fire hydrant using the GNSS receiver and that way we can ensure we have an accurate benchmark. If you like surveying, LiDAR, drones, and all this cool technology, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be releasing so much more content that you're definitely not going to want to miss. Make sure you also follow me on Instagram. I'm posting my day-to-day -day life and different projects that I've been working on, as well as the behind the scenes to these YouTube videos. All right, let's take a look at our second scan. Here we have the backyard of my house. You can see the swimming pool right in the middle, right where we started in the beginning, where the shed is, is on the left, and then the house here on the right, and then all the way in the back here where we had our ground control point. So this, also not too bad. Now starting our third scan. Now I know we scanned this part already, but now with this close-up scan, we're gonna get much more detail about the finished floor elevation for this opening of the house. Anywhere that you have an opening, you're gonna need a finished floor elevation, so right here and down over here are all considered existing finished floors and require an elevation. Okay, and if we look around the house, we can see right here is where we're actually standing next to the, you know, the front door. So we're standing right in this area, which is pretty cool to look at. The house actually came out decent here. The only issue I see is that the two fences, yeah, that's one fence. So the fact that there are two means that there's some drift that we're gonna have to deal with when we're processing the data. But overall, the scan around the house turned out pretty good. Here we go, last and final scan. Right here, and good, we're all set. The last scan here looks pretty good. You can clearly see the fire hydrant that is over there on the cul-de-sac. Okay, fantastic. All right, now that we have all four of our scans, it's time to head back into the office and process our data sets to generate a topographic survey. Hello and welcome. I'm currently remodeling my home, so excuse the mess. Hopefully by the next video, everything will be done and we'll have a really nice setup for future videos. Now we're going to be taking all four point clouds and exporting them from our iPhone. They're gonna be four separate files, so we need to tie in all of these data 
data set into one file and align that data set to the control point. I'm using a free software called Cloud Compare. You can click on the link in the description and download it. It's a free open source software that you can manage your point cloud data. And we're going to be combining all of our data sets together and then exporting them. The first thing I did was imported the ground control points from our GNSS receiver. This is going to be the baseline for our project because everything is going to be adjusted to these points. Then I imported the first scan, which was the front yard of our house into Cloud Compare. By having the ground control points and the first scan data set, we're then able to adjust the point cloud to the control points. I start by selecting which file I want to adjust, and then I select the data set that I'm going to be adjusting to. We'll start by selecting the first ground control point in the point cloud, and then going through and selecting the location of all the other ground control points found in the point cloud. After I've done that, I'll go over to my ground control point and select the same points in the same order so that they're corresponding with the same points on the point cloud. After I've finished referencing all of these points, I'm going to hit align. And now you can see that the point cloud is lined up with the ground control points. Next, I'm going to import the second data set, and it appears that there are some points inside of the house. This is due to a calibration error. Should it be too big of an issue, but nonetheless. I'll do the same thing for the second data set, assigning which data set is the control set and the other data set that's being adjusted, and go through the referencing process once again, and that'll combine both the first and the second point cloud into one project. We'll do this for all four data sets, and our end result looks like this. And as you remember, the fence had a drifting issue in the third scan, but after we've aligned the data, everything looks pretty good now. I'll export the point cloud, so now I have one point cloud file with all four data sets referenced to our ground control points. With that LES file, I will then convert it over to an AutoCAD Civil 3D standard and bring in the point cloud into AutoCAD Civil 3D. And then in AutoCAD Civil 3D, I'm going to be creating layers. I'm going to have six layers. We're going to have curb, gutter, concrete, ground shots, buildings, and utilities. The existing finished floor elevations as well as the location of the fences will be on the ground shots layer. I know that there could be more layers and I can get more complicated with this, but for now, this is just a simple topographic survey that I'm doing. With all the layers created, I'm going to use the 3D polyline command to start mapping out everything on the point cloud. This is what's known as feature extraction. We are extracting the features found in a data set and measuring the position and elevation of these polylines. All right, now that I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to create a surface from my 3D polyline. I will create the surface and then I'm going to add in these features and that will generate an AutoCAD Civil 3D surface. Now I know what you're thinking, Rami, is this even accurate? And the reality is no, it's not that accurate. What I'm trying to do is establish a workflow where you can use an iPhone's LiDAR sensor to do topographic surveying. And that's exactly what we did. I compared this data set to a surveying total station and here's the results that I found. The polylines and points that are lighter in color are features from the surveying total station. And the polylines and points that are darker are features that we extracted from the point cloud. In some areas, we are right on, especially areas that were close to a ground control point. And if we look at the benchmark, which is the top of the hydrant, we can see that all three measurements, the total station, the GNSS receiver, and the LiDAR sensor have the same elevation. In other areas, we shifted quite a bit, and the data is off anywhere between half a foot to one foot. And for someone that's just looking for general information, this iPhone can do the job. Now, if you're looking to do engineering designs, I definitely wouldn't recommend using this. I would invest in a surveyor to go out with his total station and actually survey this professional. But to know that this iPhone has the capability to develop a topographic survey is incredible. I hope in the future to show you some amazing sensor integration with the iPhone so that we can improve this data set to get it to a point that is actually accurate. Thanks guys for watching and make sure you check out surveyshirts.com.